everyone, welcome back and happy new year. I'm filming this video on January 1st, 2020. I can feel it, it's going to be a great year. And I wanna start off this video by saying thank you so much to everyone who has supported me on my YouTube journey over the last couple of years. I can't thank you enough. I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate you, how much I appreciate you taking the time to like and comment and watch my videos and let me know that my videos have helped you even in some small way, some little tip or some product recommendation that has just made you happy or changed your makeup game, then I'm just, I'm so grateful for that. And it means so much to me. And it's the reason why I do what I do. I could go on and on and on for the next several minutes talking about how thankful and grateful I am, but I won't bore you with that. I just wanted to give a very heartfelt thank you and I look forward to bringing you even more and better content in the coming year. I think I say this every year, but darn it, this is the year I'm going to do it. I want to post more on my blog. I wanna show you more of my life. A lot of people have been asking me to see the before and, a half, before and after of my kitchen remodel, my bathroom remodel. So I think I'll do a blog post about that. Maybe I'll do more fashion posts on the blog versus on here on YouTube because the fashion videos don't tend to do as well. I know those of you that watch them, you really appreciate them, you really like them, but I think I'll post more of that kind of thing on the blog. So look for that in the coming year. But for now, I want to jump into presenting to you my favorite, most used eye products in 2019. I tested out so many eyeshadow palettes last year. I'm sure a lot of you did as well. There seemed to be one, a new one released every single week. What I'm gonna show you here are my top 10. Even though I've used and loved and probably raved about on my channel more than just these 10 palettes I'm showing, I'm gonna show you here today, I really had to think about this and just pick the 10 that I find myself reaching for the most. And partly how I determined that was based on what palettes do I bring with me on vacation when I'm going to be in multiple situations, if I'm going to just need an everyday, casual, easy look, if I'm gonna need to do more glam makeup, what are the palettes that are just easy to travel with, that have great colors, great pigmentation, they're just palettes that I can count on. And in no particular order, I might have already said that, I'm gonna start with the two Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes that were my favorites last year. They weren't released last year. I think they were released in 2018, but whenever I go on vacation, I automatically reach for these two, without question. Sultry and Soft Glam. Anytime I film a video where I'm showing eyeshadow palettes, I always feel like maybe I should take a tissue and clean them all up real nice and make sure there's no powder around the edges and the mirrors all nice and tidy. But then I think, no, first of all, I don't have time for that. And secondly, it's not reality. My palettes are well loved and for that reason, they get pretty dirty. Now getting back to what I love about these palettes. First of all, I love the size. This is my ideal eyeshadow palette size. Anytime I see photos of a new eyeshadow palette that's being released and it looks to be of a larger size, more square, like a Morphe palette or heavier, I'm always a little hesitant because I just know I won't reach for it as often. Call it a quirk, I don't know. I just tend to reach for my smaller palettes the most. So Sultry has great going out shimmers in it. I love Pearl, Rose Quartz, Cinder, Ember, Teak. I love them all. I love Anastasia Beverly Hills shimmers. I like that you can use them dry or wet. They're full metallic shimmer. They don't have any chunky glitter in them and I just find that they are smoothing to my over 40 eyelids and or they're forgiving. They're not exactly smoothing, I wouldn't say that, but they, I don't feel like they emphasize texture on my lids as much as a lot of other shimmers on the market do. So I love Sultry. I love the Noir that's in here. I use it to line. I just really enjoy this palette. And then Soft Glam has been my go-to since it launched. This is a great everyday palette for me. Yes, there's another Noir in here, so it's repetitive, but that's okay. I don't mind it. I love the shade Mulberry. Cypress Umber is one of my absolute favorites. Rustic, Sienna. I just, I can't say enough good things about these two palettes. They're just ones that, as I said in the beginning of the video, that I can always count on. 
Next up, I have two drugstore priced eyeshadow palettes that I have been raving about for the past year. All of 2019, I talked about these eyeshadow palettes in many videos. The first one is BH Cosmetics. Well, they're both BH Cosmetics. One is Love in London, and the other is Beautiful in Barcelona. In my opinion, these palettes rival the Anastasia Beverly Hills as far as having great texture, pigmentation, the shimmers being so beautiful. If you have not tried at least one of these eyeshadow palettes yet, I am insisting that you do. There's an easy access link down in the description box. You can pick these up at Ulta. You can often get them on the BH Cosmetics website at a nice discount. The only thing I personally dislike about buying from the BH Cosmetics website is that in my experience, their shipping is quite slow. So next up is an eyeshadow quad from Charlotte Tilbury. I have to be totally honest with you. I don't know why I just said that because I'm always totally honest with you guys, but I know um, a lot of people out there might think that I love all things Charlotte Tilbury because I'm always raving about, about the brand, but that's not true. I've actually done a video showing my, I think it was my 10 best and 10 worst of Charlotte Tilbury or just the best and worst of the brand because there are some products in every brand that I'm just not a fan of. And I've never really raved much about her eyeshadow palette. I did really like her holiday palette that she came out with this year. I do really like it. It didn't make the cut because as I said, I wanted just to show you one the palettes that I reached for the most. And I just didn't find myself reaching for it as often as I thought I would. But I do reach for this quad in Exaggerize a lot. This has been my sort of everyday no frills makeup look. It's not the most exciting palette to look at, but it really does just do something for my eyes. It makes them look naturally defined and it brings out my eye color. Simply put, this is a no brainer eyeshadow look for me. I did just check online to make sure this was still available because I think it was or is limited edition, but you can still get it. And it's actually called the Bigger Brighter Eyes Filter Eyeshadow. Eyeshadow to enhance eye size and sparkle. Yeah, I would say that that's true. All right, we're halfway through the eyeshadow palettes. I feel like I should move a little bit faster and I think I'm going to. Um, the next four are also not new for 2019. Whenever I do these best of videos, I think to myself, am I supposed to show the best of the new products that came out in 2019 or just my favorites of 2019. And well, obviously I decided that I was gonna show you just my favorites of 2019 because these are not new. The first one is the Tartlet Toasted Palette. I also constantly reach for the Urban Decay Naked Heat Eyeshadow Palette. Clearly I like warm tones. I just find that they are the most flattering to my eye color. And I don't feel like they're, these palettes are too warm. I feel like you can get a nice neutral look with either one of these. If you are not a makeup junkie like myself, you don't need both of these. One or the other would do. Um, the formula of the Tarte, I feel, is a little bit creamier than the Urban Decay. So which one would I choose if I had to pick one over the other? Oof, so difficult. Probably the Naked Heat. And my always and forever go-to matte eyeshadow palette is the Too Faced Just Peachy Matte. I love the way this smells. Every shade in here is usable, is blendable. I just find the quality of these mattes to be excellent. And whenever I'm doing an all matte look, or even when I just need an amazing matte brown in a pinch, I will grab this and use Peach Tarte. Um, Chocolate dipped is a fantastic neutral brown. You would think that finding a good, truly neutral dark brown wouldn't be that difficult, but it really is. And chocolate dipped is pretty much perfection if that's what you're looking for. Just that real neutral brown with no red, no purple. It's just, it's awesome. And my final two eyeshadow palette favorites are the Wanted palette from NARS and one that came late in the year which is the one I have on right now, is the Scott Barnes Snatural Eyeshadow Palette. Remember how I said earlier that I like small eyeshadow palettes? This is honestly the ideal size palette for me. Even though I have a really good vanity mirror that I can get up close to, I like to have a handheld mirror that I can use to really work in my crease because my eyes are more hooded. So 
I like to be able to put my chin up and look down into a mirror and hold it, well, pretty much like the way I'm doing now. So this setup is ideal. I really like how versatile this palette is, and that's sort of the theme of all of my favorites, with the exception of the Just Peachy Mattes. It doesn't have any shimmers in it, so it's not quite as versatile if you like a little shimmer or sparkle as the others, but that's definitely a theme with me, something that I look for in an eyeshadow palette. Can I do a nice natural daytime look? Can I do something more glam? Can I really, really take it up to super glam? And this one, you can do all of those things with. I will say though that the formula of the mattes in this particular palette are not as creamy as in some of the other palettes I've shown you, but they're not bad. You can definitely build up the pigmentation and if you're using the right tools, you won't have any issues blending and I like to use my finger for these shimmers and just pack them on my lid and they're just really, really stunning, especially this sort of mossy green color. This is another one that I always grab when I travel just because it's small and you know, I can just add it at the last second and it's not taking up any room. And even though I have my soft glam, my sultry, so you might think, well, why do you need more mattes and more shimmers? Because in my world, more is more. And lastly, the Scott Barnes Natural Palette. As with a lot of these others, I really love the combination of mattes and shimmers. Scott is one of my favorite makeup artists of all time. I've been following his career since forever, since the first his first days with Jennifer Lopez in the late 90s all the music videos he did with her, and I've been watching him more lately on Tati, Glam Life Guru's channel, and I just think he has such a sweet personality, and I love when I did the review of this palette that he actually commented on my video and said such nice things, and I think that's, um, that's really cool. I was really, really excited about that. And did I already say this, but it's the palette that I have on right now. Um, pigmentation is great, blendability is great, I really like the wording that's on the mirror here. It says, be the most beautiful version of yourself. I just think that's a great daily reminder to all of us. And I think it was a nice touch. Gosh, I hope this video isn't already half an hour long. Maybe I should trim it to just be top eyeshadow palettes or favorite eyeshadow palettes of 2019. Hmm. We'll see how the, we'll see how the rest of this goes. I'll try to run through it pretty quickly. There's not a whole lot to say about mascaras. Um, when it comes to mascara, everyone has different needs. Some of us have long, dark lashes already. If you do have short, fine, light, sparse lashes like me, you might enjoy these mascaras too because they are lengthening, they're thickening, they hold a curl, and they stay black. They don't smudge on me and um, these are just my go-to's. The first one is the Wander Beauty Mile High Club Mascara. The next one is the Lancome Grandiose Extreme with the Bendy, the Bent applicator. I really like that. This one is the most dramatic of the ones I'm gonna show you. Um, the Mile High Club I really, really like for length. This gives me the most dramatic length than any mascara I've ever used. And then, I don't know what happened to it. It was here a second ago. Um, my Exhibitionist Mascara from CoverGirl. Did it fall on the floor? I can't find it. But yeah, my CoverGirl Exhibitionist is the other one that I use when I want dramatic lashes. I actually just bought the waterproof before my vacation. And um, I don't wear waterproof mascara that often. But when I do, I really like this, this CoverGirl Exhibitionist. Well, in both formulas, waterproof and regular. Oh, I almost forgot. My favorite bottom lash mascara for years now has been the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash. I go through tubes and tubes of this. It's the only one I will use for my lower lash lines because it does not smudge at all. The applicator on this mascara is just perfect for grabbing those lower lashes and really lengthening them without looking clumpy. And since I'm speaking about mascara, I might as well tell you my favorite eyelash curlers. If you have more hooded, downturned eyes like I do, I highly recommend both the Surratt eyelash curler and the Charlotte Tilbury eyelash curler. These are my favorites. Now for eyeliner pencils, my top four, the ones I reach for the most, are the Costa Riche from MAC, the Teddy from MAC, Audrey Classic Eye Pencil from Charlotte Tilbury. Audrey is a really dark brown. Costa Riche is also a dark brown, but it's more of a red brown. And then there's Teddy, which has more of a bronzy undertone to it. 
And then my absolute favorite go-to eyeliner when I want to brighten the inner area. Sometimes I'll use a black pencil for the inner rims. And my favorite black eye pencil to line the waterline top and bottom. I also seem to have misplaced. I'm gonna have to go buy another new one today because I can't be without it. It is the Voluminous, it's a chunky pencil. I'll put the name on the screen and in the description box, but that's my favorite. I like a chunky pencil for lining this area right here. I had to use today because I couldn't find it. I used one from Almay, which is nice too. Can't use gel pencils on my water lines, like the Marc Jacobs gel pencils. Anything that says gel eyeliner, there's something about that texture of a pencil that irritates my eyes and makes them feel real heavy and tired and I just, I can't wear them. So I have to use either the Almay pencil or as I said, the, the L'Oreal one works for me as well. But back to what I use when I want to brighten my inner rooms, not darken them. I love this Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade, is it 300 or 500? Boundless Bisque. It's just the perfect, not too white, not too yellow inner rim color. It just brightens my eyes, it stays on for a long time, and it's just a fantastic pencil if you're looking for something to brighten up your eyes. And I have one favorite liquid eyeliner of the year. It is the Pat McGrath liquid liner. I just really like the applicator on this. I like how dark black it is. It's easy to work with. Liquid liners can be tricky on hooded eyes. If, you're, if you struggle with doing a wing liner on a hooded eye, I definitely recommend you check out my hooded eye playlist. I have a couple videos dedicated to winged liner on hooded eyes. And this one just makes it really easy. It dries quickly. So once you've kind of perfected the wing, you don't have to wait so long to open up your eyes if you have a hood, because as we know, those of you with hooded eyes, you can get that line right here that's troublesome and you have to sometimes ruin your whole eyeshadow to get rid of. So anyway, I really love this liquid liner. So let's finish this off with brow products. There are so many excellent, excellent brow products on the market. I've tried many this year, I've talked about many this year. So coming up with my real, my true go-tos was kind of difficult. Um, I'm just gonna sort of rattle them off. I'm not gonna speak too much about them because there's not a whole lot to say. It's, you know, my hair color changes, the tone changes. So sometimes if I'm using, for instance, the um, Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit, sometimes I'll use shade two, sometimes I'll use three, they now have 2.5, 3.75. So depending on what my hair color is, is the one that I'll reach for and, and just my mood. Sometimes I am doing a, I know that might sound a little strange, <laughs> your mood, but sometimes I want my eyebrows to look cooler toned. Sometimes I want them to look warmer toned. So with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz, which I've been using for years, which is sort of like my fallback, my default, um, I haven't used it as much this year, which is why I'm not including it in my favorites, but yet I'm talking about it. Um, the taupe, the soft brown, caramel, I have them all. I've used them all. They all work. But I have been finding um, some good drugstore dupes. One is the CoverGirl Ultra Fine Brow Pencil, and the other one is from BH Cosmetics. It's the HD Brow Pencil. I use the shade Blonde in this. And then um, I also really love the Hourglass Arch brow. I use the shades blonde or platinum in that one. Now for brow setting products, I constantly reach for my 24 hour brow setter from Benefit. If I want more of a fluffy brow look, I will use this product that's getting more difficult to find. For some reason, the blonde is especially difficult to find. It's the Maybelline Brow Precise Fiber Volumizer. I love this product. It is such a good dupe for this Milk Kush Fiber Brow product. Both of these will give me that sort of fluffy brow effect that is hard to achieve when you have very, very sparse blonde brows. I have really no brow hairs up in the front. So to get that sort of bushy, spiked up look that's popular right now, I have to use one of these two products to give me the look of having Brow, actual brow hairs It's because these contain fibers. And then another good drugstore one I was recently sent from CoverGirl is their Easy Breezy Brow. And this one is pretty good too. Um, I've been using the, actually I used this one today. It's light pale, it's called. Um, it doesn't look light or pale. It looks like it's a brown, but that's what it says. 
I'll put the correct shades in the description box, but these are my go-to brow setting products. The CoverGirl, the Milk Kush, the Maybelline Brow Precise, and the 24-hour brow setter. And you know what? I think I'm going to also add the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel into my favorites. This one is also really, really good. It's just a lot more expensive than some of these others that I think are kind of just as good. So I wasn't sure if I should include it, but if you love Tom Ford, if you love luxury makeup and you are looking for a good brow product, fiber brow building setting gel, then definitely give this one a try. All right, another best of 2019 video is complete. I hope you enjoyed seeing my top 10 eyeshadow palettes, also my favorite eyeliner pencils and brow products. I did talk about eyeshadow primers in the complexion video, which as I mentioned, I will link in the description. So if you are looking for some good eyeshadow primers, I do have a couple of recommendations in that video for you. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd also love to hear from you guys in the comments. Let me know what some of your favorite eyeshadow palettes were this year. And once again, be sure that you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell so you'll find out when I upload the next video, which will cover my favorite lip products, cheek products, highlighter products. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for a, an amazing 2019. I look forward to building this community and just, as I mentioned, bringing out even better content for you in the coming year. Oh, I almost forgot. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter under the same username, Risa Does Makeup. And I look forward to seeing you all again very soon.